Oh man. So there's a, another kind of lost gems. Uh, I found this one on one of my favorite websites, the, um, lost media wiki. Uh, it's, it's a whole figment. I want to call it a TV series, but it's a figment series of these hundred to $250 tapes, uh, that schools could buy. And it's called, uh, it's called Figment Language Arts Through Imagination. <laughs> and it, it's it's the, the Figment character. And it's even voiced by the same voice actor, Billy Barty, who did his voice in the ride. Um, but he's he's teaching language arts, question mark. Um, yeah, I was a yeah. little... This whole thing is confusing to me. Yeah, I... I... I I don't know if I learned that much, uh, or if I could have, I mean, if I could have learned that much language arts from this series, <laughs> but I do appreciate a figment show. Oh, absolutely. I do appreciate a figment show. I think we um, need one now in 2022. Right? I think we do need more figment in media to, to teach people who he is. I'm just especially... not sure it needs to be English language arts. <laughs> no, <laughs> Probably not. Now there, there's like eleven episodes of this, uh, and you could watch almost all of them. I think through Lost Media Wiki. Uh, was there any episode that you watched? I, I think I watched the. I think it was the first one. It was like the Blue Potato, maybe. Oh, yes. So it that one and that one's about I think like trying new foods and different things like that. I, it was hard to piece together the parts that I saw. I was like, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure what's happening here. And it's but. really weird. So I, I watched an episode about, um, so I watched a few of them, but one of them I have to bring up because it was about dreams. Um, and so it starts out in like figments having a dream and then it flashes to some kids who have to write a story. Um, and they're reading a book, and they have to write a story, and then they're talking about do dragons dream, and they automatically disappear to this land where Figment is. He like transports them, it's and like I was like, wait Figonia a minute, Figonia or something? Figonia, yes. Yeah. And they get transported to Figonia, and right when, right when they're like trying to write a story, and they get transported to a magical dragon land, I was like, did they wish and wish with all their heart? To fly with dragons in a land yeah. of art. Is this Dragon Tales? Right? Different <laughs> different company. <laughs> right? But it reminded me of that. And it has a very PBS feel. It did. I I will admit that. For a second, like, I don't know, um, when I was looking at it, for some reason, I, I was like, wait, this isn't public broadcasted, right? And like I had to double check. And I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. That wouldn't be. Um, but it did. It's funny you say that because I thought the same thing. It uh, Yeah, it, it very much dives into that. And it uses kind of that same familiar Disney education formula that I think is uh, that we've talked about. So even with Disney uh, English and, and some of the other educational media, it uh, a lot of the episodes go into when Figment's describing some part of like the writing process um, or some sort of language arts Thing. He talks about imagination, of course, and he shows clips from uh, he'll go into clips from Disney movies again um, and kind of use that as as an example. Of course, it's like they're going to use that large, um, sure, that large media library. They uh, have it. That. Use it. They, it exactly. Um, what I find interesting, though, is just. Thinking about it, like, when I think of it now, I'm kind of like, ugh, like, these are ridiculous. But then yes. when I place myself back in 1989, like, what did teachers have? You know, like, they can't just stream something instantly to their projector or their smart board or, you know, whatever they're projecting on. Like, yeah. if they want to use media, then this is what was available to them. So... I guess I can't, you know, yeah, tear and, it and, apart too much because it was good for the time. And it was probably better quality produced, like be a better produced product um, than something you would get from some other educational distributor who didn't yeah. have the budget that Disney did. Oh, yeah. They're so going to be good at their production. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Of course. 
Um, they have the, you know, 88, 89 into the early 90s. They've got, uh, you know, the studio in, in uh, MGM Studios. Yeah. So maybe we can even watch them make it there. And we could, we've got, you know, of course, the, the Disney lot and everything. So they could turn this stuff out probably faster and better than most studios. Um, and I think, I, I mean, the quality is great. I think it was a little shoehorned in there to try to fit language arts into yes. figment. I, into I mean, I feel like science would have been a better route. Even. Right. <laughs> and especially because this is so it's part of the Disney educational media company, but it, it's under the umbrella. There's a little tag at the beginning that uh, feels very PBS. Like at the beginning of these videos, they show the Disney educational media and then they go into the Epcot educational media logo mm -hmm. that says they're sponsored by and it shows some of the pavilion sponsors like AT&T underneath um and I think that's where like we think about today like STEM like that science engineering technology math um field and it's like the the uh Epcot and that STEM go hand in hand where I think that like you said science might have been a better way to go with some of these videos and we're going to go to Epcot because this is the cool if you like this video, like and subscribe. If you really like this video, visit SynergyLovesCompany.com for the full audio podcast.